Earlier, a guy brought in an antique Colt pistol. This is a gun that collectors really want. It's also a gun that people fake a lot. So before I make an offer, I want my buddy to come down and check it out. Hello. Joe, how's it going? Good, good, Rick. How are you? I'm doing Jolly. good. Well, here's the gun I called you about. Oh, man, look at that. Colt 1860 Army. It's a beauty. I come down to the pawn shop to help Rick and the guys out. Maybe they wonder if a gun's been phonied up or anything like that. Colt came out with these in 1860, and I believe, according to this serial number, this would be about 1863, which is just over halfway in the Civil War. They'd had the six-shot revolvers before this, but they were great, big, heavy, cumbersome guns. And this was the first 44 that was light, it was streamlined, it was powerful. At that time frame, this would have been like having a, a Glock today or something, you know, this was, this was as good as it got. Now, there were a number of pretty good guns that were coming on the scene, and the Civil War was the great catalyst for gun invention of that time. Now, this gun also has the military inspector stamp here on the grip. You can just barely see it. So that was actually a military gun? Yes, yes. This would have definitely been issued to the Union Army. These guns saw use all throughout the Civil War, and then after the Civil War, they were sold on the civilian market, and the cowboys out west used them, and everybody going out west had to have a gun. People were coming out here to find a new life, a new home, and they had to be armed. Rick, what are your concerns with this gun? I just want to make sure it's definitely real, does it fire, and what's it worth? The numbers all match, which is a real nice thing. It has this serial number on the cylinder and all of the numbers here, and they all look correct. Are you OK if I, if I disassemble it a little bit? Go right ahead. From what I'm seeing, it appears to be quite a righteous gun. OK. I thought you were going to say, look, it's made in China. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think it's worth? Well, the condition obviously dictates the value. In this condition, 2000 on its very best day. But if we could go shoot this and confirm that it's still a working piece of history, I think that would add to its value. Would you be OK to let us take it out of the range and shoot it? Definitely. I've never fired the gun, so I really look forward to doing it. I hope it fires. If it fires, I know I'm going to get what I want for the gun. Meet you at the range tomorrow morning? Sounds good. All right, I'll see you guys then. I am very excited to take this 1860 Army out and shoot it. I think they're going to be pretty surprised at what an efficient gun this really is. Let's check this thing out, see how it fires. Fires or blows up in your hand, one of the two. Be optimistic here, Rick. <laughs> I've inspected it for safety's sake. It seems to be timed. Everything seems to be looking good on it. And I'm pretty confident that it'll fire. We're going to load this 1860 Cold Army. We're going to charge the cylinders with a safe charge of black powder. You're going to load all six cylinders? Oh, yeah. You really are a cowboy, Joe. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to seat the lead ball in. So we, we have our safety thing, the same thing they used back in the day, is we're going to smear grease over the end of it to keep it from chain firing. OK. What's chain firing? Chain fire is when you, you fire the one that you wanted to fire, and the fire actually jumps from one cylinder to the next. OK. Now we're going to put the percussion caps on. We'll be ready to fire. We loaded it the way they would have done back in the 1860s, powder, lead ball, grease over the end of it. You guys ready? Sure. I'm ready. Let's do it. OK. Should have worn my cowboy hat. This deal's hinging off if the gun fires or not. Uh, I'm a little nervous that it's not going to fire, because it is such an old gun. You ready? Oh! Joe, you're just a hot shot of that thing, aren't you? In the stomach. Oh, yeah, now he's going to take him three days to die, Joe. <laughs> I was really relieved when the gun fired because I knew he'd be interested in buying it. That's how a cowboy shoots, huh? That's how it's done, son. It's a nice shooting gun. <laughs> I'd, I'd be really happy to own that gun myself.
I was able to basically hit anything I wanted to hit with the gun. It shot fantastic. So what do you think it's worth? It's original. There's no question about that. It functions really, really good. And the only thing that's keeping it from bringing the big bucks is that it just doesn't really have any of the original finish left on it. But I would say in that condition, probably it would approach maybe $3,000 retail. OK. Well, I'm a little disappointed it's not worth $3,500 like I'm asking, but uh, $3,000 will work great. I'll leave you guys to it. Thanks, Joe. I'll give you two grand. You go 27? No, I'll go two grand. I'd like to get 2,500 for it. I know you'd like to get 2,500 for it, but I'd like to pay two grand. I think it's worth a lot more than that. It's a unique piece. It, it's a rare gun, but remember, I, I'm going to sell it in my store, and um, the store's got overhead. I mean, it's a thousand dollars there. You can't meet me nowhere in between. I'll go 22. I mean, that's that's what I could do. Sometimes they don't fire right. This one's fired perfectly. I'll go 23. All right, 23. It's a deal, man. I guess uh, meet you back at the shop. All right, sounds good. When he offered me $2,000, I probably would have taken it, but I figured I could squeeze a few more hundred out of him. I would have made a good cowboy. <laughs>